Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Good to have you back. Of course, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, then just welcome in it. The video I'm doing today is basically just about the things that you need to know, okay, before starting dental school. And there are a lot of them, okay? Before we get into that, of course, once again, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video if you do find that it's useful for you or that any of the points are useful. And if not, or if maybe you're in dental school and you feel like I've left something out, drop it in the comments and let me know and I might just slide it into another video. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So a few things that you need to know about starting dental school. The first thing you need to know about dental school, of course, is that it is hard. I think there is still this conception of like, oh, it's just teeth. It's no biggie. Like, oh. Oh, medical school might be hard, so let me just do med let me just do dental school. It's just teeth. No, <laughs> it's really hard. Like it's really difficult. I'm not gonna say by any means that oh, it's the same as medical school because I'm not in medical school, so I do not know what that is like. Um, from a few people I've spoken to who are in medical school, there are some similarities. And my sister and my brother do medicine as well. Well, they've done medicine and they've been working as doctors for years. Um, and there are some similarities, but. Dental school is very, very, very hard. My first year um, of dental school, I was very close to dropping out. And I mean, very close. It is a jam-packed schedule. There is a lot to learn, okay? And because it's just the head and neck that you're mostly focusing on, you have to know it in a lot of detail. So whereas um, someone in medical school um, might have to have like a general overview of certain uh, body systems and all that kind of stuff, and then learn one part in detail when they specialize, with dentistry, it's essentially like, you've just gone ahead and you specialized in medicine, if that makes sense. It's almost like going through medical school and specializing in just the oral region. When it comes to like the head and neck, you need to know every vein, every artery, every nerve, every single thing, the name of every single one, what it drains into, what it is supplied from and blah, blah, blah. Then you need to obviously know um, every bone in the skull, every foramen. So those are like little holes and stuff where nerves and veins and stuff go through. You need to know everything. With the teeth that are in your mouth, you need to know the shape, the cusp, the angle, the edge, everything of every single tooth that's in the mouth. So you need to be able to see like a pile of teeth, okay, just on a table. And you need to be able to differentiate whether this came from a child, whether this came from an adult and which side of the mouth it came from, whether it was the upper arch or the lower arch that it came from, you need to know everything. That's just the stuff you need to know in your first year, plus obviously way more. So, be ready. Number two, so this is, I guess, more for the females, um, but you know, might be for the guys too. Um, but yeah, if you cannot live without having your nails done, your eyelashes done, um, jewelry on all the time, then, dentistry might not be <laughs> the career for you. So I have to take my rings off um, whenever I'm in the clinic. My nails can't be done, not even like clear nail polish. So my nails are never done. Um, you can't even have false lashes. So if you want to have earrings, you can have studs in, um, but then even with the studs, it's gotta be a smooth surface. So if it was like a, a pearl or something, it can't be like a, a studs. In, in, a, in a setting or something, um, because they say that, you know, stuff can get trapped in there and whatever else. <sighs> of course, you have to always tie your hair back when you're in the clinic and stuff, but that's standard and that makes sense. If you have any kind of um, arguments with that, then you're just weird. If you are someone who likes to have all that zhuzh going on, no. Here is where it differs a little bit from the United States in that I've seen, I've seen some of your vlogs, should I say, and I've seen you guys in the clinic, okay? And you've got your nails did. We can't do that here in the UK. And I saw another one and she had um, an Apple watch on. We can't have anything. We can't have anything below the elbows. So if you're someone who has to have all that stuff going on, dental school is not for you. Number three, if you are somebody, okay, who wants to just finish uni, and be done with education, not have to go back to reading or anything like that. Just forget it. Just don't even waste your time. Because even once you graduate, there is a lot to do. You still have to do a year of foundation training. Um, even after foundation training, um, if you're gonna go on to specialize or anything like that, of course there's years and years of study still ahead of you. Even if you're not gonna go on to specialize and you're just gonna stay in general practice, 
you have to do what we call CPD and that's basically where um, every year or every few years or whatever you have to do um, you have to go back and do um, some more training so additional training so it's almost like kind of going over stuff so you might do like a day of radiology here or a day of uh, aesthetics here um, obviously there are some that are compulsory so like radiology um, for example and there are some that are not compulsory that could just be something you have an interest in um, but you need to go back and you need to do additional stuff. And some of those might involve tests and stuff like that as well. So next one, which I think is number four. Yeah, I think it's number four. If you're thinking that once you graduate, you're just gonna be rolling in money, not quite, okay, not quite. It does not work that way. You don't just immediately jump into money. You don't graduate and it's not part of the ceremony to then go swim in a pool of money. For the first year after you graduate, like I said, you have to do foundation training if you want to be able to actually practice in the UK. Um, and with the foundation training, every there is a standard pay for everybody across the UK. So it's a national pay um, that everyone gets and it's in the 30s. So it's not like, oh, we're getting so much money straight off the bat, no. Of course, after that first year, people go on to do different things. Some people go on to additional training. Some people go on to general practice, etc. And the pay kind of varies a little bit, but you're still looking at maybe, depending on what you do, 40s into 50s. Um, after that, it varies a lot um, for different individuals. And when you consider as well that with dentists as well, um, we have a lot of stuff that we have to pay for. There is indemnity um, that we have to pay for. If you're someone that's gonna have loops or whatever else, um, they're expensive okay they're like usually um a thousand plus for some loops um you need to pay for your gdc registration so that's a general dental council to be able to practice you need to be registered with them and you need to pay for that so it is expensive of course eventually it does pay off from what i've heard <laughs> hope it does number five i don't know if this applies to every school in the uk I know certainly with my dental school, they don't actually advise us using loops when we're in dental school. So if anyone who doesn't know, loops are kind of like, if you've ever seen um, a dentist or a neurosurgeon or um, any kind of usually like a health practitioner, actually not just health practitioners, because sometimes it's just people, technicians and stuff who work on little fiddly things, um, but it's kind of like magnification um, lenses. Sometimes they have a light, sometimes they don't. But if you are, at my uni anyway, in the UK, um, we don't learn with those, okay? So we don't have any of those. To be honest, they're expensive anyway, so even if we did, Lord knows, I wouldn't be buying any right now anyway. We have to learn to just use just the vision that God gave you, okay? Or in my case, um, with some glasses, because uh, your girl is blind. Which, by the way, let me show you know right now, I am not wearing my glasses just for the sake of this video, okay? I wear glasses all the time, so right now, your girl is blind. <laughs> I am blind right now. So if at any point it looks like I'm squinting at something or that I can't see, um, that's because I can't see. But yeah, so we don't practice with loops. So you have to get used to kind of just relying on your own sight, which is actually a good thing because I've seen some cases where I've once again seen some videos. I've seen where some dentists cannot work without loops. So if they forget their loops at home and they go to work or whatever it is, um, they can't do their job. They have to go back home. And if you live like an hour away or whatever it is from where you actually work and practice, you're basically screwed. <laughs> Another thing you can expect from dental school and dentistry in general, actually, hopefully you can't expect this. I'm not going to wish this on anybody. One thing you might encounter, which hopefully you don't, is the back pain. Ooh. Now here's the thing, I'm not going to put it solely down to dentistry because before I started my dental degree, I'd already started to have a few niggles in my back um, just from being IT, in IT, so from being sat in front of a computer um, in a certain kind of position where sometimes I was hunched and stuff, um, and just from having bad posture. So I had started to have a bit of a niggle, but dentistry is known to not, not do great things to your back and so it progressed at a ridiculous rate once I started dental school. And so I had to start taking my posture seriously. And it is very important to just be very mindful of posture in dental school because dental school can F up your back. And dentistry as a career can F up your back because you are hunched over a person's mouth all day. Just another thing that you should expect from dental school, do not expect, okay, to break up from uni right after your exams are done in May, okay? If your exams, your final exams are done in May, you will still be at uni for the next two and a bit months. 
doing lectures, learning new things, sometimes doing assessments, okay? We do not get out until the end of July. And I don't mean like, I mean end of July. So I mean, you basically only have August to live your life. So we break up on like the 27th or something of July. And then we're back at uni on like the 2nd of September. So we basically just have August and maybe four days or five days or whatever. That is it. So don't expect to be thinking, oh, done with dentistry and mate. Oh, yep. Let's go turn up. No. No turn up for you, okay? Okay, so that is it for this video. If you've already subscribed previously as well, this also applies to you. Please switch on notifications as well so you are notified when I post a new video. Um, and yeah, that would be much appreciated. But yeah, I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.